Welcome to evening uh, Bible study, special Wednesday evening. Welcome. This evening, I would like to share with you about uh, heaven and hell. You know, not many ch churches speak about the heaven and hell. How many of you believe that there is heaven and hell? Oh, yes. Yeah, well done. You are a very good Christian. <laughs> many Christians, they don't believe. Paul say, if, I, if there is no heaven and hell, you know, I working very hard on this world. I'm like a lavish man. I'm I'm like the crazy man. Mm. Do you know there is heaven and hell? There is. L look. Do you know how many times Jesus speak about uh, hell and heaven? In King James Version, Jesus speak about the hell sixty five times. In the Bible. And then, no, uh, Jesus speak about heaven 582 times. And then in Old Testament, he talked about heaven 327 times in Old Testament, 255 times in the New Testament. And but we're going to study today about uh, heaven and hell. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. 24 to 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wanted to be my disciples must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. But whoever wanted to be saved their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet for be their source? Well, what can anyone give in exchange for their souls? It's a very important verse, verse 26. Jesus said, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world? Yeah, you can gain the whole world. Yeah, forbid their soul, your soul. Jesus speak about your soul. You know, Bible, especially Apostle Paul, you know, divide the human being three areas, spirit, soul, and body. And then soul, where your soul going? What can anyone can give exchange for their soul? Look at this, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 say, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does it mean coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? The second coming. Second coming. But Jewish people, they're still waiting for the Messiah. Messiah already came 2,000 years ago. But we're waiting for second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. But Jewish people, they don't recognize that Yeshua, Jesus is a Messiah. They don't recognize. They're still waiting for the Messiah. If they read Isaiah 53, they should know that Jesus is the Messiah. But look, Paul, he divided the human being, you and me, spirit, soul, and body. When Jesus said, deny yourself and take up, your, take up your cross, what does it mean deny yourself? Deny your soul, soul. Your soul, in your soul, three things in your soul. Your knowledge, your emotion and your will. Can I say again? In your soul, three things in your in your body, in your, in your life. What is the three three things in your soul? Your knowledge, your your emotion, and your will. This is the three things. When Jesus say, deny yourself, deny your three areas, deny your knowledge, your emotion, and your will. When Jesus died on the cross. Uh, Blood come out from his body. From where? Where? Which part of his body? His ribs, the side of his body. Yeah, from top. Here, 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 here. Torn crown in here. Blood came out from here. And then Norman soldiers speared on his side. What what come out from here? Water and water. And then banging by nail. Where? Hands and feet. Listen. Here is your mind, your knowledge. Blood of Jesus come out from here. And blood of Jesus come from his chest, from heart, which is your 
your emotion your emotion do you understand your emotion and your two hand your two two uh, leg and feet is uh, your will if you deny these three area here here and your your life transform every miracle in the bible anybody deny their knowledge their emotion and their will they see the miracle every time in the bible in the bible do you know what you know uh, Jesus say to look at the Luke chapter 5 Luke chapter 5 verse 4 and 5 Luke chapter 5 verse 4 and 5 say Luke chapter 5 verse 4 and 5 when he had finished the speaking he said to Simon Peter put out into deep water and let down the net for a catch Simon answered the master we have worked hard all night haven't caught anything but because you say so I will let down the net this is a mystery this is a very important uh, principle in there how can you deny yourself deny your what knowledge deny your emotion deny your will if you deny three areas how many of you need a miracles I need a miracles daily for myself, for my family, for the congregation, for the church, for this nation. Amen. Number one, knowledge. Do you know? Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, I can explain to you how Peter denied himself. Number one, he denied his knowledge. Peter, Peter used to be a professional fisherman. Jesus used to be a what? Carpenter. Professional carpenter. Because his father, Joseph, carpenter. Peter, fisherman, he knows there is no fish in deep water. I know I went to the Israel 20 or 23 times. There's no water in deep water. No fish, there, there's no fish in deep water. Fish in the, the shallow water. He knows there is no water in deep water. There is no, sorry, there is no fish in deep water. But Jesus said, through your net in where? Deep water. Deep water. Against his knowledge. Do you understand? He, Jesus used to be a carpenter. Carpenter advice for professional fishermen through your net in deep water. Number one, his knowledge and knowledge of Jesus didn't you know, spark. He's not working properly. And second, his emotion. He was tired because he tried to catch fish all night. Couldn't caught nothing. Tired emotionally. And he to be angry. Why? This man, oh, carpenter, but he's a professional <laughs> fisherman. It's nonsense. I'm tired and need to be angry. You don't respect me. You need to be angry. And his will, he doesn't want to do it. He can throw away the net. Oh, I go back to my home. But what do you say? Verse five, Luke chapter five, verse five. If you understand this scripture, your life transform. He say, because you say so. Can you say it to me? Because you say so. This is very important. Because you say so, I will let down the net. Because you say so, I deny myself. Your word is more powerful than my knowledge, my emotion, and my will. I deny. Because you say so, I deny myself, my knowledge, my emotion, my will. And then he catches the plenty of fish. This is a secret key. But tonight I talk about uh, heaven and hell. Jesus say, what good will, uh, will it be for someone to gain the whole world? What does it mean? Someone gain the whole world. Maybe very rich man, maybe very successful man, very famous man, popular. You can gain the whole world. Tomorrow evening I'm supposed to meet with the uh, uh, opera singer Plasto Domingo. He's an 82 years old man. He's a top three, you know, used to be a famous singer. Uh, Paparotti, he died already, and uh, Plasto Domingo is, uh, is like number two. He's a uh, well, well known. His value is a uh, $200 million. Can you imagine? Well known. Then thanks be to Plasto Domingo, he came to our church, junior, junior, mm -hmm. his son. Last month, he gave his life to India. 
But this morning I was praying and praying, but unfortunately tomorrow evening only some VIP meeting. Now I tried to get the ticket to go, but I'm impossible to meet with him. And then I, I'm ready to give the Bible and pray for him and give supporting for him, preach the gospel. But, but in God's time, and then I can preach the gospel for him. Do you know what is my, my, my encouragement for him? He can be the you know, most famous uh, opera singer in the world. And then when you stand in front of Almighty God, God say, I don't know you. You sing in the concert hall, you sing in the stadium for the people. You never ever sing for me. Go away from me. Which means, go away from me. What does it mean? Go to where? Hell. Hell. Eternity. Yeah? Terrible, terrible. He can get the whole world and for, you know, yet for we, his soul, go to hell. How terrible. What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Therefore, you know, Bible speak about hell seriously. Jesus speak seriously. Heaven, Jesus speak about heaven 582 times. Old Testament 327 times in Old Testament and New Testament 255 times, five times. And translation in, into English about uh, hell, soil. S H O S H E O L soil. This is like Hebrew. Hades and Kehena. Hebrew sixty five times speak about uh, hell in, in in the Bible. Do you remember John three sixteen? For God so loved the world. What does it mean for God so loved the love the world? He loves the people, whole world. He loves the eight billion people. That he gave his own and only son. Who is this man? Jesus. Son of the living God, Jesus. That whoever believes in him, what does it mean? Whoever believes in him, born again Christian. Mm -hmm. If anybody born again, shall not perish. What does it mean perish? Die. Perish is go to hell. <coughs> perish is go to hell. But have eternal life. What does it mean eternal life? Heaven. Heaven. John 3.16, Jesus speaks about the heaven and hell. But Jehovah's Witness, they don't believe. Yeah, I met one Jehovah's Witness in the, in the petrol station a few days ago. And um, I said, you don't believe that there is a hell. But they say they don't actually have hell and heaven in there. They say, no, there is. There is actual heaven and hell. They don't believe. He said, how good God made hell. I say to him, hell, originally, why God made hell? For whom? Only Satan. Only fallen angel. Only. But fallen, you know, uh, the, the, the demons, they don't want to go to hell by themselves. They want to bring whom? Us. Bring the people as much they can. Yeah. Eight billion population in this world. How many people you may guess, you may, uh, you can say that go to heaven among the eight billion now? Can you guess? Millions. Yeah? Millions of people. Yeah. <clears throat> if one billion go to heaven is a miracle. In UK, 3.2 million people are Christian. Sorry, so 2.4 million. <coughs> 66 million people live in United Kingdom. Only 2.4 million. <coughs> How many Muslims in UK? 3.2 million, which is 3.2 uh, million. It's almost 5 percent. Which is the most uh, number one religion in UK? Islam. Which is the most common name in UK? Anybody knows? Muhammad. Long time ago, David, Paul, and John, but no more. Why? Because they have children, average six children. In UK, 1.2 people are average have a baby in the United Kingdom. 1.2 people means because of a Muslim, they get so many children. You see, Jesus speak about there is a hell, there is heaven. You know, Bible mention about uh, hell. Can you look at the second Samuel chapter twenty two verse six? 
Second Samuel chapter, you know, even Old Testament speak about hell. Second Samuel chapter twenty-two, verse six. This is uh, the cord of a grave cord around me. The snare of death uh, confront me. The snare of death is a hell. Mm. Yeah, baby, he, he made uh, these songs. One second Samuel chapter twenty-two. You know, sorrow of hell, original meaning. Sorrow of hell in surround me. Oh God, deliver me. Yeah, Psalm one one six verse three. Psalm one one six verse three. The cord of that <laughs> intercalling intelling intended to me and anguish of a grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. He said again, the pain of hell, pain of hell surrounded me. David, he speak like this. Yeah. Can you look at the uh, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 14? Proverbs chapter 23 Verse 14 say, Punish him with the Lord and save his soul from death. Actually, deliver his soul from hell. That is meaning. From hell. hell. So many people live in hell. I think you live in hell for 40 years. 40 years. You live in hell. Thanks be to God, you come out from hell. Now you are living in heaven. Yeah? Heaven is no where is heaven now? Inside us. Within you. Heaven is no somewhere over there there no. Heaven is inside of you. Heaven is within you. If you are a genuine born again Christian, you enjoy the heaven right now. Right now. How many of you enjoy the heaven right now? I just telling the truth. You must enjoy the heaven right now. If you don't enjoy the heaven right now, you need to repent your sins. Because what Jesus say, heaven is not far away. Heaven is inside of you, within you now. Of course, uh, we live in the, I mean, you, in this world, uh, you can enjoy the part heaven, not fully. But when you died, well, Jesus Christ come and we can meet in we call the rapture, and then you can enjoy the full heaven. And look at Isaiah twenty-eight verse fifteen. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 15 say you both the you have in, in, entered into the covenant with the death with the grave we have made an agreement when an overwhelming courage swept by it cannot touch us but we have made the lie our refuge and falsehood our hiding place Do you know Listen, we have made a covenant with the dead and with the hell, with the hell. It's terrible hell, hell. You know, you can see the hell in the Old Testament. Now you can see the, in the New Testament what, you know, Bible say about the New Testament. Not only Bible say, this is what Jesus say about the hell. Look at the Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. Revelation. Book of Revelation, yeah. Apostle John he saw the hell, and then he write down about the hell. Revelation chapter twenty verse ten. Revelation chapter twenty verse ten. <clears throat> and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of a burning sulfur. Where so far? Where the beast? Who is the beast? Satan. Satan. And the false prophet. Who are the false prophet? <laughs> Mohammed. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bulda. And unfortunately, I can mention about this name. All the, you know, false prophet like the Joseph Smith. Who is the Joseph Smith? Or found of uh, what? Mormons? Yeah, Mormons. 
even Jehovah's Witness, these people, all false prophets. They are false prophets working very hard in, this, in the street now. They are working very hard. Do you know how many Jehovah's Witnesses work in the street? 7,000 people in the whole of UK from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Can you imagine? 7,000 people, voluntary, false prophet. That is why I told the Jehovah's Witnesses, you are on the way to hell. Repent. Tell your mommy. She is on the way to hell. You love your mommy, eh? You love it. Eh? Tell your mommy if you love your... I told my mommy. She used to be a strong Buddhist. I told her, if you die, you go to hell. She was very upset. Son ten told her, mommy, go to, you go to hell now. You're on the way to hell. But she repented since. Now she's a deacon in the church. <laughs> she was a very strong Buddhist, but she repented. And then she became a wonderful woman of God now. Because I'm telling the truth. Yeah? Pray. Pray for mommy is good. Pray for your family is good. But you need to tell the truth. Because you love your mommy, your daddy. It's so important. And look. False prophet had been torn. They will um, torment it day and the night forever and ever. How long these people stay in the in the in the hell? Forever. Forever. False angel, demons, and false prophet. Those who are not born again, they stay in the lake of fire forever and ever. Then actually God made hell only for demons, fallen angel. One third of angel follow the Lucifer. And then they supposed to go to hell. But unfortunately they don't want to go to hell only by themselves. They want to bring the more, more people. Therefore, can I encourage you, wherever you go, you need to shut the gate of hell in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wherever you go, you can open the gate of heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is your job. Why you go to the street and uh, preach the gospel? We try to open the gate of heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. As the day, young boy, nine years old boy, he's an Irish boy. I know their family. Mommy asked him, David, David, wake up and go to school. He couldn't wake up. He died. Nine years old. Nine years old, the boy died. They don't know what, what, is, what is the problem. Do you understand? This is life. Tomorrow is no guarantee. Do you think old men die first and young men die later? No, no. We don't know. Young boy, nine. Nine. Of course, I pray for their family and, and, and supporting for them. But this is life. Therefore, while we live in this world, uh, believe in the Lord Jesus. And your name is written on the book of life. Look at the same chapter, Revelation, chapter 20, verse 13 to 15. <clears throat> Bible write down about the hell. Revelation, chapter 20, verse 13. Let's say verse 12, I can read it. I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and, and book were open. What kind of book? Yeah. In heaven, there's two kinds of book. One book is a book of life, and another book, book of deed. What you did, book of deed and book of life, two books in heaven. Eh? Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the book. The sea gave up the dead and were in it. And dead and Hades, you can see the Hades, eh? is hell. Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then dead and Hades were thrown into the well. Like a fire. Like a fire. So hot. Lack of fire. The lack of fire is the second death. Do you need a second death or not? No. We don't need a second death. Do you understand? Born in a Christian, we don't need a second death. 
If anyone names was not bound within written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I saw hell many many years ago. That temperature is we cannot even even you can something hot uh, gas fire or some so hot eh burning. Lack of fire we cannot compare. Torment, anguish, terrible, terrible pain, suffering. Is it possible they can kill themselves in lack of fire? Is no possible suicide in there. No possible to kill. To stay in the lack of fire forever and ever. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. That is why God used the church to deliver the people from from the the gate of hell. People just, they are on the way to to the hell now. Millions and millions of people they are on the way to hell. Don't go on the wide way. Do go to where? Narrow, narrow way, narrow. End of narrow way is a heaven. End of end of wide way is a, is a hell. That is why the Bible speak about these things. Yeah, whoever the names whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into a lake of fire. Do you know? If you look at John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6, heaven is real. Heaven is real. Look what Jesus said about heaven. Yeah, John chapter 14, 1 to 6. Unfortunately, around this area, do you know the Trinity Church, the Methodist Church, the minister, he don't believe that John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus never said that. Anybody know that Jesus say, I am the way and truth and life. No one come to the Father but by me. Who say that? But that minister, they don't believe. Terrible. Terrible. But he still claimed the minister in the church. I don't I don't criticize about him, no. I just tell him the truth. In love of God. He's retiring soon. You know him, yeah? And then, you know, do you know this kind of people misleading the people to the to the hell? <coughs> Can you imagine somebody's minister misleading the people to the hell? Very very dangerous. Look at John chapter fourteen, verse one to six. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back, take you to be with me, that you also uh, may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Where are you going? Heaven. Jesus come from heaven, yeah? When non religious people talk to Jesus, how you know about Abraham and Jesus say, I was before Abraham. Jesus was with God in the beginning. He was a creator. He made heaven and earth with God and got the Holy Spirit. But look, and verse Thomas uh, verse five, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. <laughs> so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Where is God the Father? Heaven. heaven. Where God stay, there is heaven. Can I say again? Heaven means, yeah, God's dwelling place. Where God stay, there is heaven. Therefore, do you know the Lord's Prayer? Your kingdom come, your will be done or not, as is in heaven. You need His kingdom. Heaven need to come down. There's a lot of prayer. Jesus explained to us about the heaven. He said, you know, God will stay in the heaven. I will go there. Heaven is a real place where the people of God will live one day. Can you say Amen? Amen. Yeah. Heaven is where God and the angels live and the people of God lives. Therefore, you and me, you are a 
eternal brothers and sisters. Do you know that? I will see you again in heaven. Therefore, while you need this world, don't quarrel, don't fight it. You'll see you again. How many of you are born again? If you are born again, you are my eternal family. But if you, I know that somebody is uncomfortable with that man. If you don't love that man, yeah, or that lady, I telling you, if you are not going to have eternal your brothers and sisters, I think when you go to heaven, they are your neighbor. You will see them every day. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> love one another. <laughs> love your neighbor and yourself. Do you understand? Can you say to each other, you are my eternal brother. You are my eternal, you are my eternal brother. You are my eternal sister. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. We live in eternity. Our job is etern eternity job, actually. On the, on the street to preach the gospel. Jesus speak about this uh, heaven. Heaven is very important. The Hebrew heaven, uh, uh, Samuel. Is it correct, brother? In, he in Hebrew, in heaven. How you say Samuel? Yeah. Shmuel. In Hebrew. Shmuel? Samuel, yeah. Shmuel. Samuel. And Greek, the Oranos. Can mean God's dwelling place. The Bible say the Lord has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules over all. Psalm 1 of the 3 verse 19 say. Also, God's throne is also mentioned in uh, connection with the mountain of God. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 16 say, Now, we already saw the hell, the lack of fire, forever and ever. Satan supposed to go there only by themselves, but Satan, they don't, they don't want to go by themselves. They want to bring more souls to, to hell. Look at the uh, Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and 2. Book of Revelation chapter 21 and then the Bible speak about the heaven, the new Jerusalem. Revelation 21 verse 1 and 2 say, Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away. And then there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully and dressed for her husband. Who is our bridegroom? Jesus. Jesus. We are his bride. Yeah, we are his bride. The Bible already mentioned, all things are new, new. Do you know that your body is new body? Eh? Glorious, glorious, new, new. And then look at the verse uh, 3. And I heard a loud voice from throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is uh, with man. Where is the dwelling of God? Heaven. And he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Look at the verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, or cry, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. No pain, no darkness, no sorrow, no death in heaven. While we stay in this world, sometimes we have to pay. <laughs> We have some suffering. Yeah? We call this world a suffering world. But Jesus lives inside of us. We are a mourning conqueror. No tears, no pain. How wonderful. Perfect peace in heaven. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Can you say to each other, shalom, shalom. <laughs> shalom, shalom. On Sabbath, Shabbat shalom. Yeah, you can enjoy the shalom for your spiritual life, your physical life, your emotional life, your mental, yes. financially. Yeah. Every area of your life. Do you enjoy the shalom? You know, mighty, mighty men of God, they enjoy the shalom. Look at the Peter, he enjoyed the shalom. Paul, he enjoyed the shalom. James, John, they enjoy the shalom. 
they don't they don't lose their shalom in any circumstance. Paul say, who will separate from us, separate us from the love of Christ? No persecution, no trials, no nakedness, no sword, nothing, even no anger. No one till they separate us from the love of God. Perfect peace. Look at Isaiah 65, 25. Book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah is a, the you know, last chapter is a 66, verse 65, verse 25. The wolf and lamb will feed it together. Wolf and lamb is normally what? They kill. Wolf kill the lamb. They feed it together. And the lion will eat the straw like ox. Ni normally lion eat what? Meat. Lion don't eat the grass. Ox, cow eat the grass. Look, the lion will eat raw like the ox, but dust will be the serpent is food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. In heaven, this is a part of heaven in Old Testament. There's no kill each other, even Lion and lamb stay together. <laughs> Do you know la lamb? Lamb is a is a you know baby uh, sheep. Which we call we, we call it under the one year we call the lamb. Yeah? Lamb powerless. Yeah, lion they can eat easily. But lion and lamb is eating together. <laughs> That's a miracle. This is a miracle. Wolf. Eating together. That's a miracle. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Eh? Or the Jesus what? Lion of Judah. Do you understand? Yeah? Lamb of God. Please, this is uh, the word of the Lord today. Don't go to hell. Hell is a terrible place. Why we preach the gospel? Why? <clears throat> Yeah, ask them. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. If you die before 40 years, uh, uh, before 40 years old, before last year, January, you definitely go to hell. Do you know that? God rescue you from lack of fire, actually. So many people still now experience of hell now. Hell is not far away. Hell is within them now. Do you know what Jesus said? Look at the John three sixteen is very famous. Do you know the John three seventeen? What the Bible say? Look, John three seventeen is a very famous also. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came to this world to what? Save the world as the Lamb of God. But when Jesus Christ coming again, how he come? come why? Try to save the world or try to judge the world? He will judge the world. For born again Christian, for you, he come with a reward. For non Christian, non believer, terrible, terrible judgment coming upon them. Look, verse 18 and verse 19. This is the uh, verdict. Uh, our light has come into the world. For well, man loved darkness into the, uh, uh, instead of light. Because of their deed was evil. Yeah? People, they love the evil. Be wise. What is good? Be innocent. What is evil? But people, they are opposite. People, they are very wise. For what is evil? They are innocent. For what is good? You used to be very wise in uh, what is evil, yeah? You know how to steal, <laughs> you know? But now, you know more steal. Thanks be to God. This is a transformation. Look. But whoever lives uh, by the truth comes into the light so that it may be uh, seen plainly that w what he has done had been done through God, yeah? Already, 
you know, God sent his son Jesus. And you get the verse 17 once again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but save the world. People already live in the darkness. Those who are not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Verse 15. Everyone who believes in Jesus may have eternal life. There are already people that are condemned. Those who are not believing in the Lord Jesus. Yeah. They, need, they love the evil. They love the darkness. Yeah. And finally, look at uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, 19 to 31. This is the word of Jesus. What Jesus say about uh, heaven and hell. There are two men, rich men and the poor man, Lazarus. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus over with a sore and a longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dog came and then licked his sores. Do you know, totally, do you know, can you see that? While both of them, you can see the one man enjoyed heaven. One man experienced hell. Beggar, poor, not enough food, terrible sickness. He was in the like the hell, physically. But listen, what Jesus said, continually look. Verse 22, the time came when the beggar died. And the angel carried him to Avram's side. The rich man also died and was buried. Can I prophesy for you? Hundred years later, you are not in this world. Do you believe that? Yes. I, your pastor, boy, you, your prophesy is not not correct. But hundred years later, how old? Almost hundred what? Hundred what? You'll be uh, if you leave, you'll be a Guinness record. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus will come before. <laughs> but hopefully tonight Jesus will come. <laughs> Look, everybody died sooner or later. Yesterday, nine years old boy died. Can you imagine? Therefore, you need to wake up. Look, the time came. Beggar died, rich man died. Look, verse 23. In hell. Where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Avram far away and with Nazareth by his side. The call, he called to him, Father Avram, have pity on me and sent Nazareth to dip the uh, tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. What kind of fire? Hell fire. Lack of fire. Terrible pain. And they, can you, uh, Father Abraham, can you ask you this Nazareth? They know each other, actually. Because he stayed in front of his house. He was begging. Can you drop the one drop of water for my tongue? And then, then they, actually, he said he reckoned with the Father Abraham. <laughs> Do you know that Abraham is in heaven? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they are in heaven. Joseph is in heaven. Look, what you say? But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things, while Nazareth received better things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Mm -hmm. And beside all this, between us and you, a great uh, chasm has been fixed, so that those you who wanted to go from here to you cannot, nor can uh, anyone cross over from there to us. It's very interesting. Heaven and hell, they can see each other, but you cannot cross. <laughs> it's very interesting. When you go to heaven, oh, it's terrible, terrible. When you go to heaven, I'm, I, what I'm saying, you see some people who knows. You preach the gospel for them. 
many times, but they refuse. They reject the gospel. They go to hell. They may say, "I wish I had received the gospel and believe in Jesus." When this man, Jaiwa, call and then they preach the gospel for me, I wish. I, <laughs> but why I'm doing now? I'm staying like a fire. And look, verse twenty-seven. He answered, "I beg you, Father." Send Nasr to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. That man Nasr go there and tell them, "There is hell. I am rich man. I am staying the leg of fire. Five brothers. He loved us. Can you imagine? This he staying the leg of fire, but he asked them." My family don't need to come to this uh, hell, that kind of a petition. But he answered, "Then I begging you, Father, send another to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this uh, hell." Abraham replied, "They have Moses and prophet. Let them listen to them. Who are the uh, symbolic of Moses and prophet?" Who are they? No, do you know what Jesus said? There is a Moses and prophet. Who are they? You and me. Already evangelists in the street. Already Christian in there to telling the truth. That is meaning. Do you understand? They have a Moses and the prophet. Let them listen to them. Listen to you. These worldly people in Kingston tomorrow. Tomorrow we go to Kingston and. From two o'clock, and sister Korean lady Victoria Song, she come with the and she play the keyboard tomorrow, and then we're gonna preach the gospel. There is a Moses, there is a prophet. No fault of Abraham, he said. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. How can you go to heaven? Repent your sins and believe the Lord Jesus and go to heaven. They may repent, but look, verse thirty-one. He said to him, "If they do not listen to Moses and prophet, if they don't listen to evangelists, they will not be convinced. Even someone raised from the dead and go there to preach. <laughs> do you understand? Their heart is very wicked. They don't listen to you. I know. I know. I preach the gospel. Many people, hundred thousand." Do you know how many years I preaching on the street? Thirty-one years. Thirty-one years I preached the gospel. Hundred thousand. Do you know how many people came to Lord Jesus in Brixton prison? I preached for twenty years. Over two thousand. Two thousand people came to Lord Jesus in Brixton prison. In these days, by the grace of God, many souls come to Lord Jesus. Mm. Yesterday we went to a shop, and then one guy, the working the fitting fitting room. And he gave his life to Jesus. Thanks be to God. I preached the gospel one guy on the street, and then he just gave the leaflet for his uh, the the realize the uh, op op optician optician shop. And then he he said very nice. You are very smart. He said. He said I have only one smart. I have only one suit. <laughs> Holy, did a very interesting. Holy Spirit spoke to me. Actually, he gave his life to Jesus a few weeks ago, last last month. Holy Spirit spoke to me. Why well, don't buy the another extra extra suit? And I took him to go to uh, TK Maxx. I bought it for him. And I told him, come, come this Sunday. Worldly man, he accepted the Lord Jesus. But anybody accepts the Lord Jesus as their personal savior, they need to grow their faith. How? <coughs> well done, Charlie. Come here. Yeah. Because I told him to stay here, and listen to the word of God. Good for you, brother. Yeah. No more run away from the good news of Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep the word of the Lord. Don't go to hell. Mm -hmm. Encourage your family. Don't go to hell. There is hell. There is heaven. That guy, rich man, he begging, Father Abraham, can you send this dead man, Nasser, to go to my home and tell my five brothers they don't need to go to this terrible place, tormenting, agony, pain, suffering. 
Jesus said, no, there is a Moses, there is a prophet, there is an evangelist, there is a the Christian to share the good news, but they don't listen. These people, your brothers, not listen to this Moses a prophet. They never listen to to this man even Asar who died and lays up and they don't listen. Do you understand? But never give up. Never give up to preach the gospel. You know what was my prayer? When I become a born again Christian, I pray like this for my family. Do you know Act chapter Act chapter look at Act chapter sixteen. Verse 31. Acts chapter 16, verse 31 say, They replied, Believe the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. You and your household. Believe the Lord Jesus, and you and your household shall be saved. And I pray to the Lord, I believe the Lord Jesus. How about my family, my household? Can you save everybody? I pray to God, Lord, you can save all my family, all my family, not just the only believer. Not only born again. All my family will be a missionary. Can you say amen? amen. Is it good news or bad news for my family? Good, good, news. good news. I will let them pray. Thank God. God hear my prayer. My younger brother is a pastor now. My younger brother, the minister of the church. God hear my prayer. But no, no, I'm not satisfied. All my family, before they died, yeah, their names are written on the book of life. Everybody get a salvation. This is my prayer. God answer me actually. God touch all my family. Do you know Paul? Paul, Apostle Paul, he was a you know, man of a prayer. He's a so spiritual man. He knows who, whose name is written on the book of life or not. Look at the Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, he speaks about these people. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3 say, Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for my uh, for my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friend. I plead with uh, uh, you, dear, and I plead with uh, uh, Sedeche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal uh, your fellow, um, help this woman who have. Content, uh, contended at my side in the course of gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose name are in the what? Book of Life. Can you see that? Paul, you say Clement, his name is written on the Book of Life. I know that your name is written on the Book of Life. What is your surname? Groves. Yeah? Groves. How do you spell? G-R-O-V-E-S. Groves. Yeah. Your name is in the written on the book of life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Last year, can you give your life to Jesus? I think about it. <laughs> no. okay. Okay. You are very stubborn. <laughs> okay. Because uh, we, we no one force you. Okay. But good news is coming continually. And um, in January this year, oh, thanks be here, sir. I'm ready now. And uh, believe the Lord Jesus, and then you receive the water baptism as well. So thank you for praise God. And your name is written on the book of life. Amen. Do you know your name is written on the book of life? So precious. You cannot buy your name. Do you know that their name in it, it, uh, in written in the book of life by a million pound or ten million pound? Why? That is priceless. So precious. Air, you cannot see, but it's so important, yeah? It's uh, priceless. Water is priceless. So important things are priceless. Your name is written on the Book of Life. How wonderful. Wonderful. Paul say, I know Clement and some of my fellow workers. Their name is written on the Book of Life. I know your name is written on the Book of Life. Yeah, I know. I know you guys. Paul say, Clement is still alive at the time. 2,000 years ago, so he said, I know Mr. Clement, his name is written on the Book of Life. I know that, Paul said. But I know when I'm working together, I know Mark, Mark D Dyson. What is your surname? Dice. Yeah? Dice. Dice. D -Y -E. Yeah? D -Y -S -S -E. D -Y -C -E. Ah, D-Y-S-O-N? D-Y-C-E. Ah, D-Y-C-E. Your name is uh, written on the Book of Life. I know that. I know that. I know that. 
I know that. I know. Thanks to God. I know. <laughs> Lillian. <laughs> I know Charlie. Savas. Mordecai. Jody. Thank God. Your name is written in the book of life. Praise be the name of the Lord. This is the most important job. Yeah? You can get, gain the whole world, but if your soul go to hell, what kind of benefit? Nothing. nothing. You gain nothing. You may enjoy the, some, something in this world physically, emotionally, but that is not, there is judgment after that. There is heaven and hell. We came to this world and we catch the fire, we catch the calling to preach the good news of Lord Jesus. Keep doing. Yeah. 66, 66 million people waiting for you. Do you know how many people received our leaflet up to now? 2,530,000 people received our leaflet. We need to do another 4 million. I calculate at least 13 years. We need another 13 years. Hopefully Jesus come back before 13 years. We give the leaflet continuously. Shall you pray together, Lord? Wherever I go, I want to close the gate of hell. Wherever I go, I want to open the gate of heaven. Millions and millions of souls come to Lord Jesus through my life, through my witness of Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. There is heaven and hell. Unfortunately, many people, they don't believe that there is a heaven and hell. We know that there is heaven and hell. Jesus already speak about uh, heaven and hell. Oh God, help us to using by you and then many souls come to Lord Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one come to the Father but by me. We know then, God's dwelling place is heaven. Jesus, you are in heaven now. But Lord, we love to bring the more souls and to go to heaven through our life. Lord, we thank you. You can using us for your glory. And you got used to Peter. When Peter preached on the street, 3,000 came to Lord Jesus. 3,000 names written on the book of life within one hour. We love to do it. Within one hour, 30,000, even 3 million names written on the book of life through our ministry. Lord, using us mightily for your glory. We declare, declare the United Kingdom shall be saved. Yes. 66 million names written on the book of life through our evangelism. Even tomorrow, 100,000 people will, 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 will listen to our message tomorrow in Kingston. Yes. Can you save them? Can you deliver them from all the unbelief, from all the darkness? Father God, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as just in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Keep on praying for tomorrow's outreach in Kingston from 2 p.m. And keep on praying for our mission to Korea from 29 to 10th of June. Keep on praying for us. And keep on praying for another mission to Poland and Germany from 26 to 30th of June. Thank you. God bless you.